Hello and welcome to a new episode of Infugenic Renaissance. In this episode you will learn what cannabis has to do with Napoleon. <laughs> That's right, you heard it right. But this time I'm going to talk to you about another infusion called... As you probably have already guessed, today I'm going to talk to you about cannabis. One of the infusions, surprisingly enough, Trust me, I was really, really surprised when I learned that it is considered an, as an entheogen by at least UC Berkeley. That's where I got that certification on psychedelics in the mind. But of course, I've known cannabis for 21 years so far of my life, and I got a lot to share from my own personal experience and of course from the knowledge that available out there. One particular book I will be talking about today especially called The Emperor Wears No Clothes. That masterpiece on cannabis deserves a lot of attention and a lot of coverage because if you've never heard of it and you're watching this video, this is the book you want to read because it has a lot of scientific data and historical data put in one book. All the facts, double, triple, quadruple checked by the author and of course with the sources that can prove this or that statement. So I'm not going to recite the book today but I will talk about it. Among other things such as the cultural aspect and the importance in culture of cannabis, medical use of course because this podcast is dedicated to the therapeutic potential of infusions in treating various illnesses and when we're talking about cannabis it is not only mental illnesses it is also physical illnesses it actually helps treat pain and in some cases really good way but of course there are other illnesses that it can treat. I will also talk about the science and slightly talk about different variations between THC and CBD and what the fuck do they stand for and why one cannabis is prohibited whilst the other one is legal in different countries. So yeah, this is the topics that I'm going to talk to you about in this episode. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and put your comments in the comment section because I want to hear your thoughts, okay? Let's talk about history first. So relationships with humans and cannabis have been lasting for millennia and if you think about it just like logically and reasonably, you can realize that probably the paper that was used before trees started to being cut was made of cannabis, surprisingly enough. Clothes was made of cannabis and as well as other things. But of course, cotton wasn't there for the duration of entire history of the humankind, unlike cannabis that was there. So I will briefly mention it to you, but I can talk about it a lot. So just to give you an understanding of the significance of cannabis and ganja for the world, um, Say, let's talk about India. You probably have heard about not only India, but a Saint River called Ganja or Ganga. Depending on how you pronounce, pretty much meaning is the same. So this is the river in which people are being burned and, you know, sent down the river. It's a really good tradition or, I don't know, way to get closer spiritually to the environment and Mother Earth or whatnot just to go swim in the ganja, although I wouldn't recommend you do that because nowadays ganja is not like it was before 200 years ago, for example. But anyway, this is the Saint River, it's called Ganja and Ganga and I been to India several times and I've had episodes recorded in India and in Himalayas and particularly if you want to look at some of the pictures they're there in this ep podcast not episode but if you go to the northern parts of India and you just drive on a highway you can see two meter height plants just growing along the road. So it is widely present there, although technically and legally speaking it is prohibited of course. So there are other aspects to it but I won't dig into them. One other thing just briefly worth mentioning, pretty much prior to 20th century entire paper industry was holding on cannabis. Everything that is related with ships like knots and ties and ropes, uh, again 
bags for storage, clothes, everything that's related with it. It was number one protein source for birds and in general because it has a lot of protein. It was also used for oils for lighting in a dark environment for instance, so if there wasn't electricity here today probably I would have been using cannabis oil. Unfortunately I don't have it. But anyway, it was used like this. It was also used as a source of fuel for uh, motor engines and other steam engines and not only that. Um, there are a lot of applications, but today I'm going to talk to you about medical, of course. But before going there, let's take another step and talk about the substance. So cannabis is not technically legal, it's just a plant. There are two types of cannabis, indica and sativa, and depending on whom you ask, they will uh, have different properties and how they affect on the human's mind. Remember, psychedelics are mind manifesting after all, and they do affect human's mind. I'm not going to talk to you about the variations and the difference if you want to, put it in the comments and, you know, I'll make an episode about it, why the fuck not? But one thing you need to know is that the molecule that is prohibited that is related to cannabis is called THC. What it is, tetrahydrocannabiol, meaning nine water <laughs> cannabial. Yeah, I'm probably not that good at it. And, but anyway, so there is another molecule called CBD, cannabidiol, which is not illegal and in the majority of cases is widely acceptable and you can find it distributed all over the places in different locations like grocery store for instance or maybe cosmetic store or maybe even a pharmacy or something like that nowadays you can find various types of serums for skin <laughs> by the way i'm using it i don't know whether or not you feel it but 37 years old probably should look better or worse i don't know i'm russian so i killed my a lot of my buddy using alcohol unfortunately but that was also due to my father's alcohol yeah let's not dig into that di dark direction um so thc and cbd so thc is the one that is prohibited cbd is not prohibited and as well as other types of derivatives cannabis is a plant uh marijuana mary jane and uh, different types of names actually but i somehow they just keep my mind in the moment but that doesn't matter THC has this potency to create this high feeling. Well, whenever you feel, hear, or see somebody talking about getting high, this is the molecule they are high or were high on, THC. Even though there is cannabis that you can find with THC in it, the percentage of 0.02 is the amount that is not going to affect you in terms of getting that high feeling. A significantly different percentage of THC should be in the cannabis this plant so that you can experience the high of it starting with 10% on average and going all the way to 27 that's one that I've seen at least in stores in Thailand which is unfortunately planning to all ban cannabis and put it for medical use only although I don't really understand why probably because people oh cops couldn't get bribes because of that right so before that if they were to stop somebody who has cannabis on them they would have got a kickback or I don't know how you call it basically the system was corrupt so probably they weren't happy that it got allowed they weren't longer available to make money out of it so going back to CBD that's the one that is widely acceptable and known for as well healing properties in terms of science I'm not gonna dig there again put it in the comments and I can make a different episode about it but let's talk about the therapeutic use and of course uh, cannabis can help people treat various types of me mental illnesses but I want to specifically talk about physical pain because I am a person with arthritis and I can definitely tell you that I can feel the effect of cannabis because it it eases the pain in my joints and yeah you can say that's probably the reason that I've consumed substances in my life not really I have a very rare disease called ankylosis spondylitis which is probably one in hundred thousand people so I guess I'm lucky in that sense yeah it's slowly killing my joints that's why I have a 13 minute routine exercise in the morning each morning so that my back stays flexible 
but of course they go to gym as well but it's not about me let's go back to the cbd quality so it can also work in different types of mental illnesses for instance anorexia and one would say that anorexia or i don't know how you pronounce it properly is not treatable easily and that is true but there is an effect of cannabis, mainly THC rod and CBD, which leads to munchies, the desire to eat. So imagine an anorexic person with the disrupted circuits in the brain not wanting to eat, then all of a sudden wanting to eat a lot. That's how cannabis works basically. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it would lead to obesity or anything like that. Of course, it is different. One particular study that I want to mention today, and again, I will talk about risks, but still, the study that blew my my mind completely. So there was a statistical analysis of the data available from different sources. I don't remember where exactly. It probably was United States. So roughly we're talking about several dozens of thousands of people. All right. And they were analyzed. So they were hospitalized during the pandemics with, of course, COVID. So they found patients that mentioned that they've been consuming cannabis and they've identified exactly same one-to-one -one alike profile of people who were pretty much same except for they weren't consuming cannabis that got of course hospitalized due to COVID. They went on to look at several different metrics such as intubation when you know person cannot breathe by themselves and they have to be intubated so that oxygen gets in their uh, lungs and then to the brain as well because without it it won't be able to function. And of course other aspects like uh, sudden death due to COVID and some other related issues to it. Cardiac arrest, for instance, and of course, they've narrowed down to six close to fatal consequences and cross-checked them against each other. So what they found out is that for people who consumed, oh, by the way, one important thing here, so both of the groups were consuming tobacco, okay? So this is critical here. So people who consume only tobacco and people who consume tobacco and cannabis. So for people who consume tobacco and cannabis, the percentages of intubation, of sudden death and uh, other related issues on those six metrics, by the way, if you wanna know which metrics are those, put it in the comments and I'll get back to you because I have a link to that study to prove it. All the metrics and the percentages for people who smoked tobacco and cannabis were twice less than for people who were just smoking cigarettes. So just to give you an idea, if a sudden death was in, say, 10% of the cases for people who smoked just tobacco, for people who smoked tobacco and cannabis, it was 5%. And that same logic applies to other metrics. And this is just tip of the iceberg. This is just one study out of thousands. And cannabis is the most research infusion out there. And that's the beauty of it, because there are a lot of facts. Let's now talk about the legal aspect. Of course, due to the racist Nixon's war on drugs in 1971. <laughs> anyway, yeah, put it in the comments to see whether or not it was 70 or 71. But anyway, it got outlawed through these institutions like United Nations and all other countries pretty much agreed that cannabis is no longer legal. But surprisingly enough, as said, all the pulp and all the, all the paper was made out of cannabis. By the way, there is a conspiracy theory here and the original theory as to why cannabis got banned is due to the corporation called DuPont. And it's not my words, again, read the book, it's all in there. So I'm not saying that this did in fact happen, but if you look closely at that particular period and have a look at the facts, you'll probably get to the same conclusion. That's not only me. Anyway, conspiracy theories aside, quickly to recap here. Before the mid of 20th century, all paper, clothes, ropes, everything that related with ships was cannabis dependent. And just to give you flavor, the needs of Western world for cannabis were insane. And Russia, until mid of 20th century, for the duration of 300 years, supplied 80% of the needs in hemp of the Western world. <laughs> To me, at least, it blew my mind. So, it is illegal in the majority of cases. 
substances, it is illegal to consume, sell, buy, and depending on the jurisdiction where you're located at, the punishment can be very harsh. For instance, in Russia, for half a gram of cannabis, you can go to five years in jail. This is ridiculous, right? In other countries, of course, situation is different. In Thailand, until they banned it, it is still allowed to travel domestically with up to 10 kilos of cannabis in check-in luggage, which blows my mind, but they are going to outlaw it pretty soon. Let's go back to the risks quickly here because I can talk too long about cannabis and you don't want me that unless you can put it in the comments. But yeah, the risks of course are there and there is a uh, mental illness called substance use disorder and particularly cannabis use disorder. Moreover, as with all of the other infusions, it is better not to consume infusion if you or any of your first-line blood relatives have schizophrenia or had bipolar disease and schizophrenia or any of those. I wouldn't advise to consume it to people with anxiety because it may sharpen up. Remember, infusions are meaning enhancers, so that could not work. In, that may affect you not in the best way possible. But of course, if you consume it for too much and for too long, it can mess up your hormonal system as well. It can increase estrogen. And for men, this is not something they want to have a high level of estrogen because it can lead to various types of consequences like testicular cancer, for instance. So it is better to, of course, consume cannabis in moderate amounts if you're consuming it, because I'm not telling you that you should. It is illegal after all, don't forget about it. I'm just talking about risks here. And of course, it is never a good idea to get high and then drive, for instance, or operate a machinery or something like that. Other than that, if you're not risking your life or lives of others, it is up to you what to do with your mind and body as long as it is not breaking laws. Those laws, you can't consume cannabis, that's... A, I don't know who is this law for actually, because there's confirmation, there is proof basically that in countries where cannabis is legalized, it is working in a positive way for the economy. And United States, specific states of course, because not in all of them is allowed to consume, sell, buy, cannabis but those that are allowed it uh, for example if i remember correct this california colorado and probably a couple of other states that i don't remember but anyway they're collecting billions of tax dollars from the industry so of course that type of money can go in the healthcare system or any other system but one thing for sure here is that cannabis is 10 times or i don't know 100 times less harmful than alcohol I don't know whether you believe me or not, but those are the facts. And double check me if I'm lying here, okay? Of course there are risks, so you just need to know that they exist if you are abusing the substance. However, in moderate conditions and provided that you follow the recommendations that I've listed before, it's gonna be alright. So today I've spoke to you about cannabis, its importance in history, in cultural aspects, and of course slightly deep dive into the science of it. With with uh, applications of it in the context of therapeutical use for both mental and physical health. And if you want me to dig into a particular topic in more details, please put it in the comments. I hope you liked it. <gasps> By the way, almost forgot. I wanted to tell you about Napoleon's War, <laughs> okay? So recently there's been a movie called Napoleon right or the napoleon by ridley scott pretty darn good movie although for people with uh, problems with uh, attention then if they lack it they probably are going to experience a tough time watching this movie because it, it requires a lot of attention it requires a lot of your time but it's brilliant it's masterpiece in my view so anyway the untold story here is that unfortunately it was not in the movie but if you look at the history again book the emperor wears new clothes you can find that one of the reasons napoleon Napoleon went to Russia is due to him. <laughs> <laughs> not because he wanted to get high. He wanted the supply of hemp for France because it was banned due to the collaboration between the United Kingdom or back in the day England, I guess, and Tsar Russia. <laughs> 
yeah, pre-revolution, I don't know how you properly call it, the Imperial Russia, the Russian Empire, probably. Yeah, yeah, anyway, so Napoleon got fucked, long story short, because of the fucking climate, and yeah, if you're a person who has never been to Russia, this is pretty much how you can experience life in Russia. Just fucking cold for 9 months out of 12. And depending on where, yeah, it could be 12 out of 12. But of course, rough time. Anyway, so this was one of the main reasons why Napoleon invaded Russia. So, hemp influenced people make stupid decisions, but of course it helped people make wise and interesting discoveries as well, of which I can talk about in more. So, thank you for watching, and I'm going to conclude this episode by unveiling the cannabis history here. Thank you for watching, and until next time, see you on... Shit, almost said psychedelic renaissance. On the theogenic renaissance, until next time.